Weigh in links. You want to be consistent with the days of the week that you weigh yourself. Choosing the date depends on what we're going to talk about right now. So you probably know by now the goal is, hopefully you know this by now, the goal is to get you to the point where you're fasting for a like a 48-hour fast every single week, right? That's the goal. So you need to be thinking now, what time of the week is going to make sense, right? Most people, it's in the middle of the work week. Some people, their schedule is reversed. So I follow a pretty typical, most people end up saying, oh, I like that. So what I do when I'm actively trying to drop body fat, which is now, by the way, I will 48 hour fast from Monday night, basically Monday's normal. And then I fast all the way till dinner on Wednesday. So that's my 48 hour fast. So in that scenario, I'm weighing myself Tuesday mornings. And then Tuesday mornings would be my trisepatite shot if I was taking it. So you're killing two birds, one stone, taking care of the shot and the weigh-in at the same time and choosing your way in now so that you start weighing yourself in anticipation till when you get to that point of the 48 hour fast, which is going to take you either one to six weeks, to, depending how aggressive you are. And we're going to talk about progression through fasting in a second. I was planning on starting my fast on this weekend because I haven't got my peptides yet and I don't want to be a total, <laughs> I don't want to be brain dead for work. So would you suggest, so I've already done my weigh in. Is it, am I going to get in trouble if I don't do my weigh in? Um, no, I think you're fine right now. And then just get in sync with it later. There's yeah, you get, you have to get into sync with the pattern, right? So you might have to shift things out in the beginning, just try to shift it out with where it is with the goal in mind of getting to the place of what we talked about now. Yeah. The main thing is not weighing yourself after the fast. That's because you drop so much water weight. And then you're always going to have this weekly cycle of a bunch of water weight and then regaining about 60 to 70% of that weight and then having a net loss. So that throws off your weekly weigh-ins significantly, unless you do what I say, which is time it right before the long fast every week, and then you're fine. So now plateaus, do either of you guys think you're in a weight loss plateau? Sounds like Mark, you haven't, you're probably not because you're getting started when you get back. Yes. Okay. But you guys both have been on a GLP one this entire time though. Going straight into that, the, one of my categories for basically designating you're in a plateau is having been on the med. How long have you been on Ozempic for or compounded semaglutide? I've been on it for about six to seven months. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's no, yeah. So you need to start with the reset. The reset is how I fix a plateau and a, a plateau is a state of metabolic downregulation. So that's all going to make sense when you watch those videos that are on that form. Since that is such a detailed section, Mark, I would probably I would love for you to learn as much as you can and, and implement some stuff on this trip to a certain extent. Obviously, if it's vacation, enjoy yourself. I'm already doing, I already do intermittent fasting as it is. I do I only eat from 11 to seven. Good. Yeah. And I, yeah. So I'll, but I'll read it or listen and read everything that you've sent me. Now, now that I'm thinking about this more in depth, you're going on vacation. How, how comfortable of a vacation is this going to be for you? How comfortable? Meaning, meaning, what do you mean by we, that? Like, are we going there and I'm going to eat whatever I want kind of vacation? No, I'm pretty good. I've learned where I, I basically have taught myself don't eat anything out of a um, bag or out of a box. So everything yeah. is um, going to be healthy meat, protein, and vegetables, salads, et cetera. I will be partaking in more alcohol than I normally do, but I don't drink that much alcohol. So it's not going to be like I'm going to be pounding it or anything like that. So, no, for but, sure, for sure. So yeah. I guess. You're going to have to decide depending on how much of a rush you are in or not in, but the reset takes three to four weeks. And since you haven't read that yet, basically it's a process where you're not going to be losing weight or you're going to be slowly counting your calories and increasing your calories week by week. So it's a little okay. bit of a tedious process. And so you may, I know earlier I said you wait till afterwards, but you actually may want to combine that with your trip since you're going to be, you're Without even trying, you're going to end up eating more calories anyways during this trip because alcohol is right. a, so it almost, without you trying, you're going to be doing a reset just by nature of eating more calories. So okay. I would actually, now that I think about it, since you are going to be eating more calories by nature to minimize fat gain, that's going to be happening this weekend or this trip, go watch that section and then you'll, you'll then you'll appreciate the process. Maybe you'll be lighter on the first couple of weeks and then let yourself expand. But, but yeah, so definitely check that out. And then when we get back, we can get back to baseline. And if you want to jump on another one of these calls, you can, or if you're ready to start your reset, then you can just start that and text the flow hotline. The reset, the main takeaway is you're going to be texting the flow hotline every week during the reset. Do you think you're in a plateau or you're not sure? I've been at 155 for about a week, but then this morning I weighed myself and I was down at half a pound. So I don't know. 
real. And, and, and you've been on you've been on the GLP one for how long? Two months since February. So that's new. So if you zoom out the last four weeks, have you been losing every week? Yeah. Yeah. Do you happen to know how many calories you're in taking a, a day on average? Yeah. And I know that's my problem because I do orange theory four to five times a week and I track everything on my fitness pal. Yeah. So I'm definitely at a caloric deficit every day. Let me, I can tell you. So like yesterday I was, I had a six night. That is one of the things I had a question about was how to determine your is it TE, the, the, yeah. the caloric intake? Because on the Facebook page, it said that everybody recommends 1800 as a standard. Okay. And so that puts me at a 694 deficit. You, you, you'd be surprised how accurate that is actually just grossly. Obviously you got to, there's variables, but go to a T, there's a TE calculator and then whatever it tells you, it's probably 15% too high. So we'll apply that sort of 15% off the top and it's pretty damn accurate. Because I'm having a really hard time getting it. <laughs> Yeah, but the problem is you're going to hit a plateau if you don't. Metabolic downregulation is a guaranteed result of being in a caloric deficit over time. That's just how that is. Yeah. How much of a caloric deficit should I be in if my 1800 calories is my goal and I'm doing the workouts? Should I not do the workouts and just do strength training or? Yeah. So I'm always a strength training is a must is no matter what in the program reset after program for life. Any, so that's your base, no matter what, that never changes. And it's just a matter of if you have time to add anything else to it, then, then great. But increasing too much cardio is no different than just eating too much is eating less. It's the same. It's the same result to your metabolism. It's producing a caloric deficit, burning calories, eating less is the same thing as far as what we're trying to navigate around, which is preventing that metabolic downregulation. So it's a game. It's a game we're playing here. And this is what I'm one of my, one of my keys to law, lifelong sustainability, because that's the relationship I'm looking to develop with you guys is helping you to teach your body. So as I learn your body with you, I'm also teaching you to learn your body too, as well. That's how this end goal of charging you guys $15 a month for a weight maintenance group, which involves me training you guys every single week on the latest and greatest is a very real possibility. Nobody has a weight maintenance group. Nobody has that because weight maintenance has never been possible. Like literally this is, it's a, it's impossible by the data. Only one out of five people maintain weight loss. It's long, long term. No one's really talking about it. Like what I do and truthfully, how could they talk about it? If you really take a step back, because, because the question we're talking about is how to use these things sustainably. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you take a step back and look at weight loss as a whole, they don't even know how to accomplish lasting weight loss in, ge in general. So how could they talk about the specificity of doing it within the framework of the medication when they don't even know how to do it as a whole? I said, I'm really not super excited about being on medication long-term. I guess it's, is it, I was pre-diabetic and I said, it's either this or insulin. I don't know. And my doctor said, we just don't know that there's just not enough research yet. There's not enough people on it yet. I think as, the years progress, they will, but right now we're the guinea pigs and the doctors have no idea what to do. So they just think you're going to have to be on it forever. That's a possibility. And that's not something I'm super excited about. No. Yeah. And the data on GLP one post weight regain is actually faster than regular weight regain, which common sense tells us, of course, you're going to gain the weight back faster, but it was already going to happen without the med weight, med induced weight loss going to happen faster with med induced weight loss. So that's why this protocol is so aggressive. But I've made this protocol to be pretty dang easy to implement. And anyways, that was, it was a good tangent of really painting the picture of how I operate, why things are the way they are, how I think, how I apply, how I teach you guys about your body. And because that, that that's crucial for long-term success, there's a lot of pieces to it, but you learning your body is key. That's why a lot of my answers are depends. So we were in the middle of just finish the plateau. So we're having that discussion with you, Laura. You've been on it for two months. You're losing weight. So I think you're fine to continue, but you're probably already starting to develop one. So you're really going to have to increase your intake. So as we start this protocol for you, you're going to increase your fasting window, right? Which means even more caloric deficit. So I need you to really focus on increasing your intake on those non-long fasting days, like dramatically. And don't even worry about being so conscious and counting it. Like you're, it sounds like you're counting it now, which is great, but 99.9% .9 of people cannot sustain a life of counting calories. 0.1% can. 
if you are the 0.1%, then by all means do it for the rest of your life. Cause you will have an insane advantage over everybody else. It's just, yeah, I don't really want to. I'm just trying to learn like what's going to work for me. I like right now I have no idea how much I, I know. Eat. I know. And counting calories for three weeks to a month is a phenomenal experiment that I do make everybody do at least once because you learn what I call calorie counting intuition. Now, this skill, calorie counting intuition, is going to be a piece of the long-term success. I just need you to be able to look at food and kind of go, okay, that's really high. That's actually not that high. Like, you can't do that without having counting calories for a couple of weeks. So your experiment that you're doing right now, it's effort that's going to be well spent. But after a month or so, if you want to stop that, I would go for it. But if I were you, I would take a lower dose. I, mean, I can't it, it, get it anywhere. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you can get it from us. Yeah, you can get a bottle and then you can choose your dose with the bottle, which is nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's a decision that you have to make on your own as far as your dosing. The one I'm talking about is the mindset one. Oh, here you go. Hey, weak mindset, no problem. Not that you have a weak mindset, but but watch that because it plays into what I want to talk about right now, which is that too much hunger suppression can be a problem. There, there's no future for you guys that I can't create in, in the lasting weight loss space that doesn't involve you being able to exercise control over your own hunger and over your own um, uh, food chatter. There, food chatter is a disease. It, food chatter is the symptom that we're all trying to handle with these drugs yeah. because it's too high. But z just imagine for a second, if you had zero hunger and zero food chatter your entire life, how boring would life be? If you never had cravings, if you never had hunger, <laughs> that's almost as big of a problem. If you had to remember to eat and you had no, it just, a healthy, normal person has a healthy amount of food chatter and a healthy amount of hunger, but it's within that framework of being controllable, right? It's not a disease state, which requires medication, which is where you guys are at. So too much appetite suppression creates a weaker mindset and makes it more challenging for you at the end of this when we're trying to wean off. So this is where it's like such a, and, and doctors, they're not dosing you off of that. They're just like, are you losing weight? Great, you're good. You're not losing weight, let's take more. That's all, that's all these doctors are doing. And we're talking board certified obesity specialists because sadly they don't have enough time with patients to be able to do more than that. So in a perfect world, in my medical practitioners that prescribe this to you guys agree with me, we're all on the same page, but the best dose is the lowest dose that allows you to implement the lifestyle choices, which we call the flow protocol. That's the game here. And you can start and you can, we're going to talk about supplements here, but you can strategically utilize these supplements as additional tools to give you some more appetite suppression. Because if you think about the seven day week, when do you need the strongest appetite suppression? Only on your fasting days. There's appetite is a weekly thing. So if I can just, get the dose to where it helps me survive those other five days where I'm just not stuffing my face and I have control. And then those two days, let me stack some supplements on those days so that I can really make that 48 hour fast as easy as possible. That's the perfect scenario. If you really think about it, we'll talk about supplements and then we'll go back to fasting. As you saw on my list, I have your daily, the essentials. So those mm -hmm. are pretty straightforward. There's the dosing there. there you'll see all that mark. It, it, it lays it out. You have a link to purchase. I don't care if you purchase mine, but these are the bare minimum. And then I broke it down into a bunch of categories that are situational. So that way you don't feel overwhelmed. If you have any of those issues, there's the protocol. But then I have a whole section called extra appetite suppression. That's what I'm talking about. So oh. that I have patients that small, but 20% that come to me and they're not even using GLPs. So for them, if they're not using a GLP, they need all those appetite suppressing supplements because that's what they're running off. Of. If you're, if you're using them, then you just need one of those. Getting back to the fasting, once you're through your reset, you can do your intermittent fasting, you know, 365 days of the year during a reset, no problem. But it's when you progress past stage one. So those two stages that I discuss on the forum, you got your 24 hour stage and then you got your flow stage. Your 24 hour is your 24 hour fast. And uh, graduating through this stage would be that you can accomplish two 24 hour fasts on separate parts of the week within that week. And you can do that successfully. That once you can do that, you have finished that stage and then you can start progressing yourself into the flow stage. The flow stage is everything beyond that point where most people fast from dinner to dinner. It's different if you fast from breakfast to breakfast. That's a little, but most people don't do that. Most people are fasting from dinner to dinner. 
So if you're fasting from dinner to dinner, the big hump, the big milestone is the next day going to bed, not having eaten all day. That's the big milestone because it's like weird. Like you don't normally do that. <laughs> In fact, most of us have never done this. Um, and so once you can accomplish that, you wake up the next day, you're already 30 plus hours into the fast. At that point, you are in the flow stage. You are only going to do that length of a fast one time per week now. And that's going to be your rhythm. And you're trying to progress that to 48. Whether you can progress the 48 your first time you do it, or whether it takes you three or four rounds, that's up to you. And look, 48 is not like there was literature done on that. And I'm <laughs> like 48 is an arbitrary number that I chose based off of 10 years of doing this on people and seeing what number worked for the most amount of people most of the time. And it was 48. You start getting past 48 and you start getting more in plateaus that start happening. And then less than 48, right? So people ask me, why do you have to fast so aggressively? You don't have to do any fasting and you know you guys are going to lose weight. That's what the GLP ones do. <laughs> you don't need any fasting. So why are we so aggressive with the fasting? It's because this is going to improve the hormones and fix the disease obesity, which is presenting itself with this weight maintenance resistance. So the reason why nobody can accomplish lasting weight loss is because they got this roadblock, which we're calling obesity, whatever you want to call it. I don't think we really know, but it's a combination of things. And it's the flow protocol, the aggressiveness that fixes those hormonal issues that provide stability in the future. That's why we have to be so aggressive. And yeah, it's basically the most aggressive you can be in a weekly basis without tapping into the problems of the metabolic down regulation. So can we have coffee on a fast? Absolutely. Just yeah. Okay. You could have whatever you want. That's zero calories. And if you are going to eat calories, it needs to be from fat and fat only. And you had mentioned in one of your videos that monk fruit, and there was another one that I, it, the, the jury was still out on it. Did anything come to conclusion there? No, I'm good with stevia, monk fruit, and allulose. On a fast? What was that? On a fast? On a fast. Yes. During a fast is fine. Allulose? I don't think I've ever heard that before. That's a new one. I have a little monk fruit with the stevia that I, I forget where I get it from. The monk fruit that I use in, I'm not a coffee drinker, shocker, except for espresso martinis, but but but, but yeah, I do that in tea and that's fine as well, I'm sure. And any kind of tea is okay? Like an herbal, like a mint tea is fine? Okay. All of them are good, yeah. You can start getting into the nuance of teas. That's a whole medicine itself, really. So the idea is to get to a week of 16 hours? Two way before, before you go to the 30 and then ultimately to the 48. So the goal is to progress yourself through the stages as quickly or as slowly as you desire. So okay. stage one is your daily intermittent. Stage two was your two 24 hours on opposite sides of the week. And then stage three is where you go to bed that first day, right? So now you're in that 30 plus range and then trying to get that to the 48. But that's a, once you're in that stage, it's a once per week now. Versus 24 could be two in a week. So the idea is to get to a week of 16 hours. Two way before, before you go to the 30 and then ultimately to the 48. So the goal is to progress yourself through the stages as quickly or as slowly as you desire. So okay. stage one is your daily intermittent. Stage two was your two 24 hours on opposite sides of the week. And then stage three is where you go to bed that first day, right? So now you're in that 30 plus range and then trying to get that to the 48. But that's a, once you're in that stage, it's a once per week now. Versus 24 could be two in a week. I think I already said that earlier. Resistance training is always your priority above anything else. And if you do want to get something else afterwards, my second most favorite type of workout is the high intensity interval training. Yeah, I've, Ever since I watched your video, I stopped doing, well, I, in Orange Theory, you do 20 minutes of each mm -hmm. rowing, then uh, weight training, and then treadmill. And so I've been, ordinarily, I like put most of my effort on the treadmill. And so ever since I watched your video, I'm just lifting heavier weights and not going as intense on the treadmill. And I'm, I still burn 500 calories in a session. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Save the save all that extra cardio for maybe near the end of your goal when you really want to push the needle more 
But the game, the best way is to get as much fat loss as you can without needing cardio. That's the best way for so many reasons.